There is power in the blood of Jesus. Power to save, power to wash sins away, power to heal, power to deliver. I want to talk to you about the blood of the Lamb. In the Old Testament, animals were sacrificed in order that people might be made right with God. Today, you and I no longer need to make those sacrifices because one sacrifice was made once for all time. Jesus is the perfect Lamb of God. John chapter 1 verse 29 says, The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Under the Old Testament system, sacrifices needed to be made again and again and again. But in Christ, we have complete liberty. In Christ, we are completely forgiven. For that one sacrifice, his life laid down, was the ultimate sacrifice, the one and only sacrifice needed in order to secure our salvation. Hebrews chapter 9 says this, For Christ did not enter into a holy place made with human hands, which was only a copy of the true one in heaven. He entered into heaven itself to appear now before God on our behalf. And he did not enter heaven to offer himself again and again, like the high priest here on earth who enters the most holy place year after year with the blood of an animal. If that had been necessary, Christ would have had to die again and again ever since the world began. But now, once for all time, he has appeared at the end of the age to remove sins by his own death as a sacrifice. And just as each person is destined to die once and after that comes judgment, so also Christ was offered once for all time as a sacrifice to take away the sins of many people. He will come again not to deal with our sins, but to bring salvation to all who are eagerly waiting for him. And that's Hebrews 9, 24 through 28. And what a price he paid for you and I. Christ laid down his life. When he died on that cross, when he offered his blood, he paid a price. You and I were the joy set before him. The accomplishment of the will of the Father was the joy set before him. Romans chapter 5, verses 8 and 9 say this, but God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. And he truly did suffer. For the scripture says in Isaiah 52, 14, just as many were appalled at you, his appearance was so disfigured that he did not look like a man. And his form did not resemble a human being. When Christ suffered, he was beaten beyond recognition. What a sacrifice he made. The Son of God, the precious blood of Jesus. I want you to realize that the body of Christ was itself supernatural. Think of the fact that he was conceived in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the very nature of his being was that of the supernatural. So that when he laid his life down, every drop of blood that he bled was precious. Every drop of blood that he bled carried power, carried authority. Every drop accomplished the will of the Father. So much value, so much in every drop. The blood of the Son of God. And that's the price he paid for you and I. Why? He did this, of course, to bring about salvation. He did this, of course, to reconcile us to God. But there are many things that the blood of Jesus does, and I want to show you just a few of them. Number one, the blood brings protection. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 says, Get rid of the old yeast by removing this wicked person from among you. Then you will be like a fresh batch of dough made without yeast, which is what you really are. Christ, our Passover lamb has been sacrificed for us. So Christ was called the Passover lamb because his death was symbolized in the Passover. And of course, as we read of the Passover, we learn of God's protection 
through the blood. Exodus 12, beginning at verse 21, the Bible says this, Then Moses called all the elders of Israel together and said to them, Go pick out a lamb or young goat for each of your families and slaughter the Passover animal. Drain the blood into a basin, take a bundle of hyssop branches and dip it into the blood. Brush the hyssop across the top and sides of the door frames of your houses and no one may go out through the door until morning. For the Lord will pass through the land to strike down the Egyptians, but when he sees the blood on the top and sides of the door frame, the Lord will pass over your home. He will not permit his death angel to enter your house and strike you down. That's Exodus 12, 21 through 23. You see, the blood of Jesus brings protection from the wrath of God. By living lifestyles of sin, people store up for themselves the wrath that is to come. But when they receive the blood of Christ, when the blood is applied to their lives, to their souls through faith, then that appeases the wrath of God and the wrath moves over them. Also, the blood protects us here on earth. The blood protects us against those things which come against us here and now. Nothing outside of the will of God can harm us when we're covered by the blood. We apply the blood of Jesus through faith. It's by faith we enter that covenant. It's by faith we are reconciled. And the blood brings protection, not only from the wrath of God, but from those things which seek to do us harm here in the earth. Number two, the blood brings authority and deliverance. Revelation 12, 11 says, And they have defeated him by the blood of the Lamb and by their testimony. And they did not love their lives so much that they were afraid to die. So in other words, the blood and the word of the testimony is what caused them to overcome. It's the power of the blood of Jesus in your life. It's the power of the blood of Jesus that has been applied to you and to your home and to your children and to your loved ones and to everything that you own that keeps it free from demonic power. The moment you were saved, the moment you came under the blessing of the blood, every curse was broken. Every bit of demonic power lost its influence in your life. The power of the blood breaks addictions. The power of the blood breaks bondages. The power of the blood breaks curses. Every curse, every curse, I want you to hear that. Every curse is broken in the life of the blood-bought Christian. When God shed His blood, He redeemed you. You became His. He purchased you. He owns you. And if you are under the ownership of God, you cannot be under the ownership of some demonic power, of some demonic curse, of some manipulation by man who is trying to practice some dark power. The power of the blood gives you complete authority over and deliverance from demonic influence. When I pray for those who need addictions broken in their lives, when driving demons out of people, I step into the reality knowing, I step into the reality of the blood knowing that God has given me authority over that demonic being and I plead the blood of Jesus. And when you know the power of the blood, then you'll know the authority that God has truly given you. So number one, the blood brings protection. Number two, the blood brings authority and deliverance. Number three, the blood brings healing. Isaiah 53, 5 says, But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. In fact, forgiveness and healing are mentioned alongside one another throughout the scripture. An example, Psalm 103, verses 2 through 3 say, Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he has done for me. He forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. The same blood that saves you, the same blood that delivers you, is the same blood that heals you. By His stripes you are healed. By His stripes your sicknesses, yes, that's what the scripture means there, your sicknesses are healed. When Jesus shed His blood, When his back was whipped, by his stripes we are healed. When his back was whipped, 
He was purchasing your healing. He was purchasing your deliverance from sickness. The blood of Jesus brings healing. And he wants to make you whole. And you receive healing the same way you receive salvation. It's by faith in what he has accomplished. Number four, the blood brings peace of mind. Isaiah 9, 6 says, For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, the government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. What I like to do is I like to contrast Isaiah 9, 6 with John 19, 2, where the scripture says, The soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put a purple robe on him. The Holy Spirit showed me this connection, that it was with the crown of thorns that Jesus was crowned the Prince of Peace. Because there he bled, on his head, which represents the mind, the crown of thorns coming upon him, the, that crown of suffering, that crown of torment purchased your peace. Jesus went through mental anguish so that you could have perfect peace. Romans 5.1, Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God. Why? Because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. Peace with God is ultimate peace. If you have peace with God, you have no worries. Why? Because even if someone tries to kill you, even if they destroy your body, they can't touch your soul. Even if they try to take everything from you, ultimately God is the one who provides. Even when they speak against you in criticism and try to destroy your name, it doesn't matter what they say about you here as long as your heavenly Father speaks the better things about you there. It doesn't matter what people say about me, so long as, as God is speaking well of me. So then, if I have peace with God, I am walking in ultimate peace. When I know I'm right with Him, when I know that I'm connected with Him, when I know that my conscience is clean before Him, it brings peace of mind, because what can really be done to me? Who can do what to me if God is for me? Number five, the blood brings forgiveness. Matthew 26, 28. For this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. Leviticus 17, 11, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. So number one, the blood brings protection. Number two, the blood brings authority and deliverance. Number three, the blood brings healing. Number four, the blood brings peace of mind. And number five, the blood brings forgiveness. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would activate the power of the blood in the life of that one receiving this now. I come against sickness and disease in the name of Jesus. I come against every demonic strategy in the name of Jesus. I come against every curse in the name of Jesus. For no curse can be upon those who are bought by the blood. I come against every lie. I come against every strategy. I come against those things that would even try to harm your people physically. And I plead the blood over that one watching now over their home, over their family, over their loved ones, over everything that they own. Lord, activate that power in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for the power of the blood of Jesus. And I want you to say it because you believe it. Say amen. I'd like you to leave a comment in the comment section right now. Why do you think we don't hear sermons on the blood as often as we used to? Let me know your answer to that question in the comment section below. And now I want to read some comments from a previous video that we released. The title of the video is Something About Jesus That's Rarely Mentioned. And this is actually a video from my series on the I Am. And this is specifically talking about how Jesus is the only way. A side that is rarely talked about concerning the Lord is his commitment to absolute truth. 
Jesus was absolute truth. And Jesus claimed to be the exclusive way to God, no compromise. And I want you to make sure to take a look at that video. It will challenge you to make a stand for Christ. While you're doing that, make sure you're subscribed to us on YouTube. Click that notification bell. That's very important so that you can receive notices when we release new content. And of course, follow us on all of our other platforms wherever you're watching from. So here are the comments from a previous video titled Something About Jesus That's Rarely Mentioned. The first comment comes from Mary Lugemba who writes, Thank you, Brother David, for another amazing message. I was truly blessed. May God continue to use you and your whole team for his glory and to spread the gospel of Christ. Evelyn Peters writes, Thank you so much, Pastor David, for this powerful and encouraging message. Divine Allen writes, Thank you, Pastor David, for encouraging me to share about Jesus no matter what the world thinks. God bless you, brother. Annalisa Moberg, Thank you, David, for your style of teaching the Word of God. You are a blessing. Bless you, your family, and your staff. The final comment I'll read from this video comes from Pauline, who writes, Thank you so much, Pastor David. As this topic is rarely preached, especially how you explain the concept so clearly, God truly speaks through you. It was a good reminder of why I'm rejected, but I will identify with Christ and publicly proclaim him. I want to share a scripture with you. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. You know, you hear a lot of talk these days about political unrest or economic instability. And there are so many rumors, there's so much information, there's so much coming at us that if we're not careful, we can begin to forget that God is sovereign, that God has authority over it all. So I want to encourage you right now to release your fear and grab hold of faith. I want to challenge you to step out in faith and to sow a financial gift into this ministry right now. This will help us continue to create the content, to do the events around the world. And by the way, we release all of that for free because we believe freely we have received, so freely we give. So help us to freely give. Help us to continue to produce everything that we're doing, the live streams, the videos, the events, and the Holy Spirit School. Help us win souls, help us build believers, help us spread the gospel all around the world. Give a one-time gift by going to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate or become a monthly supporter. This is very important. Become a monthly supporter by going to davidhernandezministries.com slash partner. I encourage you to go to the website, davidhernandezministries.com slash partner, and take a look at all of the gifts that we give to our monthly supporters, all of the benefits to being a supporter on a monthly basis. Of course, you know, you're pleasing the Lord, you're helping us to win souls, you're accomplishing the will of God in the earth, but we're asking you to become a monthly supporter as well as if the Holy Spirit should lead you to give a one-time gift. So again, give a one-time gift by going to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate, become a monthly supporter by going to davidhernandezministries.com slash partner. Do it today if you believe in what we're doing, if you're blessed by the content and you wanna join hands with us to make a difference around the world, Yes, I'm talking to you. Don't think it's somebody else watching this video. It's you. I'm inviting you. I'm challenging you. Join us and help us reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ preached in the power of the Holy Spirit. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.